Hi, I'm Mrs. Eastum. I'm going to read chapter 10 of Masterpiece. The title is The Woman and the Sword. Marvin quickly ducked back under James's collar, worried about being seen. Christina's face was so close, her eyes fixed on James. James pressed against his father's leg. What? Where? Carl asked. Christina's gaze returned to the drawing. It's extraordinary. It's given me an idea. Denny raised an eyebrow. Her ideas are dangerous, he said to Carl and James. What are you talking about? Carl turned from one to the other. We're only here for a couple of hours. I have to get James home by five o'clock. Christina glanced around the gallery of the elderly couples and the guided tours murmuring past. It won't take long, she said, and Marvin thought her voice had a pleading note. I'd love it if you could come to my office. I want you to see something. Carl rested one large hand on James's back. But we've barely had a chance to look at the exhibit, he said. I know, Christina said apologetically. I won't monopolize your afternoon, I promise. But if you come with me, I can show you some other drawer drawings. Would you like that, James? I guess, James said, his voice hesitant. He looked up at his father, and Marvin could see Carl's impatience. I'm sorry, but I'd really like to take him around the exhibit. That's why we came. He took the drawing from Christina, who released it very reluctantly. And his mother will be upset if I don't get him home for dinner. Perhaps another time. Christina pursed her lips. It won't take long, Mr. Tarrant. Carl. Carl, you'll still have time for the exhibit. Denny, who had been standing nearby with a preoccupied expression, finally intervened. Carl, if you don't mind, it could be important. I ask you as a favor. Marvin saw that Carl and Christina were facing each other, equally irritated. Finally, Carl shrugged. Oh, all right. I don't understand either the urgency or the secrecy, but all right. James? James nodded his head, and they followed Christina through the gallery to a plain wood door tucked away in the corner. Here? James asked. It's like a secret door. Christina smiled at him. This is the entrance to the drawings and prints department. Convenient, isn't it? I've got it, Denny said. Pulling a small ring of keys from his pocket, he winked at James, full access for special friends of the museum. I'm trying to get a lot of use out of these before I have to give them back. He turned the knob and held the door open for Carl, James, and Christina to enter. Marvin looked around in amazement. The nondescript door opened into a large study lined with bookshelves. There were doors and hallways opening off it, all hidden behind the wall of a gallery. How long are you here for, Denny? Carl asked. Just a couple weeks, then back to Getty. I won't be sorry to leave this cold weather for my California sunshine, I can tell you that. Christina Balcony's office was at the end of a long corridor. It was a large room with windows overlooking Central Park and floor to ceiling shelves crammed with books, probably fat, dusty volumes of art history, Marvin decided. There were a few battered wooden chairs around a long table. She indicated to them with one hand while she retrieved a book, big book from her desk. James, his father, and Denny sat down and waited. Christina balanced the book awkwardly in the crook of her arm and thumbed through the pages to a glossy reproduction of a pen and ink drawing. She set it down in front of James. It's another drawer, like the fortitude drawing. This one is called Justice. Marvin, still trying to shield himself from sight, could see that the drawing was similar to the drawing of the girl with the lion. The same small size, maybe three or four inches square. Same color ink, same impossible level of detail. But this image was of a woman in a long flowing gown, with a sword in one hand and a set of scales in the other. Her body was half turned toward the viewer and she gazed sadly past him, the scales raised, the sword heavy at her side. Is it the same girl as the one with the lion, James asked? No, Christina said, look at her face. Drew's people are always so real, each one distinct, but they share a kind of melancholy. What's melancholy? James asked. Sadness, Carl answered, watching Christina. Right, a kind of sorrow. Why, why are they sad? James asked. Marvin thought they did look a little sad, but it was more than that. They looked as if they were deep inside themselves, thinking private thoughts. Christina lifted her shoulders. Who knows, really? Drewer didn't have a happy life. His marriage was difficult. His wife had a bad temper and cared mostly about money. He threw himself into his art as a way to escape that. Marvin thought Drew's wife sounded a little like Mrs. Pompadour. 
but he believed in beauty, Denny added. He once said, what beauty is, I know not, though it adheres to many things. Durer believed art was a way to find beauty in the most ordinary aspects of life. Like your drawing, James, Carl said gently, taking that ordinary scene outside your window and turning it into something beautiful. James blushed, his freckles dark on his cheeks, but his face filled with a shy smile. Christina continued to stare at the drawing. Like any artist, Durer put his life everywhere in his work. These drawings are a response to his own sadness and loneliness. Carl frowned. That's quite an assumption to make. Christina raised an eyebrow. Assumption? We know a lot about his life from his letters. I don't doubt it, but you're assuming that his drawings are about his own life. The sadness you see could be a deliberate choice for this picture. Something Drew wanted to say about justice. Marvin looked from one to the other. What were they going on about? James's even-tempered father suddenly seemed annoyed. Christina dismissed the comment, turning to James. Whatever the reason, there's always this intense, lonely quality in Drew's art. Do you see it? Marvin wanted a closer look at their drawing. There was something powerful about the picture, but also something held back. Justice. This picture wasn't with the others, James said. No, no, it wasn't. Christina exchanged a glance with Denny. Carl checked his watch. Isn't that it then? Is this all you wanted to show us? Christina's brow furrowed. What I wanted to show James, yes. Marvin looked at them in bewilderment. He'd never seen Carl sh show such dislike for someone, and it seemed fully reciprocated. Christina crouched next to the table, her pretty face eye level with James's. James, have you ever tried to copy something? Just the way you copied the scene outside your window? But not a scene, a drawing. You mean like trace it? James asked. Christina shook her head. No, not tracing. Copying the image yourself just by studying the artist's lines. No, James said. Well, I mean sometimes, with cartoons. His voice trailed off. Do you think you could try with a drawer drawing? James looked puzzled. This one? No, Christina said quickly, not this one. The one from Denny's museum that's hanging in the gallery, Fortitude. What are you talking about? Carl interrupted. What would be the point of that? He turned from Christina to Denny. Denny himself looked unsure. You want him to copy Fortitude? Why? I don't know, Christina said softly. It's probably hopeless. I just thought we'd see if he could make a good likeness of it. What, now? Here? Carl shook his head. I told you we just came to see the exhibit. We don't have time for James to start sketching things. James had a panic-stricken look on his face, and Marvin could feel him trembling. All my drawing stuff is at home, he said. Christina straightened, resting her slender hand on the edge of the table. That's okay. If you'd prefer to take a copy of it home with you, that's fine. She flipped a page of the book. Look, here it is, right after the justice picture. You could take the whole book. I just... If you don't mind, James, I'd love to see if you could do it. She hesitated, still watching James. Nobody looked as closely at the world as Drawer. Nobody cared as much about capturing its smallest details. Your drawing has that same sensibility. Marvin felt his heart swell. Carl shook his head. Drawer can't compare to Leonardo or Michelangelo. <laughs> Christina tilted her head, considering. No, not in the emotional force of the drawings. He didn't have their originality and vision. He's a quieter artist. But in sheer patience, she hesitated. Yes, Denny echoed firmly. In his faith that beauty reveals itself layer upon layer in the smallest moments. Well, there's no one like him. In truth, beauty. In beauty, truth. Christina reached her hand across the table and gently turned the pages back to the drawing justice. Denny slapped James's shoulder. So what do you say, James? I'm not exactly sure what our mysterious Miss Balcony is planning, but want to give it a try? Marvin couldn't take his eyes off the drawing. The strong, solitary woman, with her sword at her side and the brass scales dangling from one hand. He wanted to draw like this. He wanted to be inside the head of Albrecht Durer, adding each particular detail, getting closer and closer to the truth. He knew what his parents would say. He knew what his entire family would say. It was dangerous, ridiculous even. But more than anything, he wanted James to say yes. I don't know, James said. I don't know if I can. Will you try? Christina's gaze was steady. Please? James looked up at her, biting his lip. Uh, okay, he said finally. 
Oh, James, thank you. She bent quickly and hugged him. Just for a moment, her glossy golden head dipped close to Marvin, and he could smell the clean, warm scent of her skin. Then she gasped. Oh, my goodness, a bug! 